So we're now going to see how to use power series to get a solution to a second order differential equation. This is a linear differential equation, but not with constant coefficients. Um, it is homogeneous, but notice we have these polynomial coefficients. Right? And uh, we want to be able to find the uh, fundamental solution set. So we have uh, initial conditions set at zero. If they're not at zero, your power series need to be centered at some other point. Example three talks about this. Uh, in general, it complicates the formulas. Um, so it's covered there and it's covered in the book, but probably won't come up on any of the practice problems. Since our initial conditions are when x is zero, then our power series is just a sub n x to the n, right? Power series centered at zero. And we talked about the derivatives of that just using the power rule. We're able to bring that exponent n down and drop it by one to n minus one. And then the second derivative, bring the n minus one down and drop the exponent to n minus two. You could always use those formulas when your initial conditions are at zero. All right, and the next thing we did was substitute these into the differential equation. So the whole first half of this should be somewhat a review of the previous methodology. But since a lot of it is kind of new, we're still going to go through it all. So there's the function itself. Here's the derivative. And here's the second derivative. Remember, our goal is to try to shift the indices and change the exponents on x so that we can actually combine all these series into one and factor off an x to the n, something like that. But before we don't do that, we want to distribute, uh, specifically distributing here, the first summation will distribute to the 1 and to the x squared. So this sum times 1 is just sum itself. And this sum times x squared will give us an x squared in front. So we get two sums from that first one when we distribute. The rest of the equation is the same. No distributing there. Right? So far so good. All right, now we want to shift the indices to get x to the n in each series. We already have that with the last one. It's already x to the n there. But let's do it for the others. So in order to make the exponent n, I need to increase it by 2, right? n minus 2, we'll have to go up by 2 to get n. So if that's increasing by 2, I need to increase the other n's by 2 as well. So you get a sub n plus 2, n minus 1 goes to n plus 1, and n goes to n plus 2. And well, where do you want this to start so that they are equivalent summations? Notice that this one starts when n is 2, and the numbers are 2, 1, 2, 0. So you'd want this one to start at 0 to get the same 2, 1, 2, 0. Okay. So that one's nice because not only did we get the exponent the way we want, but we also took care of step 5 and got the index or the series to start at n equals 0. Oh, this one. All right. So I think in the previous methodology, we maybe had a separate step where we actually brought these coefficients in. I didn't actually do that. So we'll do that right here. So you've got this x squared out front of the second series. You want to bring that into the series. It will then combine with the x to the n minus 2, just using rules of exponents. We would add the exponents, 2 plus n minus 2 is n. So 
that's going to be the uh, second series. What about this third one? It's got an x out front, so we bring that in, it'll combine with the x to the n minus 1. Adding the exponents, we'll get x to the n. I guess in this methodology, that's part of distributing is also bringing those coefficients into the series. Okay, so shifting index on the second one is now a moot point, right? Actually, the other three, they all have x to the n. So the only one we did need to shift was the one we already did. Make sense? So that first one had the n minus 2. We've got that fixed. The other three all have x to the n, so they're good. All right. Now we want all of them to start at n equals 0. Uh, the first one was fixed in step 4. That starts at n equals 0. But the two middle ones do not start at n equals 0. So let's see if we can justify them being rewritten or if we have to take certain terms out and start at n equals 1. This is the second series. Am I able to do what I want and just change this to 0? So what I'm doing by changing that from n equals 2 to n equals 0 is I'm adding on two more terms in the series, right? When n equals 0 and when n equals 1. Are you subtracting two terms? No. You know, the first series has everything from 2 on up. This one starts 2 earlier. So it's got n equals 0 and n equals 1. So I've added on two more terms. If they're 0, then it's OK. I'm just adding 0, it's no problem. So you want to check those. When n equals 0, it is 0 because there's an n there. And when n equals 1, it would be 0 because there's an n minus 1 there. So technically, those are the same series. Um, so I don't have to actually change the index that shows up in here because by just changing the starting point, I'm only adding on zero terms. Right? When when n is zero, I've got zero. When n is one, I've got zero. When n is two on up, I've got the same thing. So those are actually the same. Okay, we got you. I'm gonna do that same we try to do that same thing with this one. We saw a case where this doesn't work, so you do want to check that it does work. Uh, here, I'm just going to add on that n equals 0 term, and that's OK, because when n is 0, it's just 0, because of the n there. So I am able to just change those starting points and not have to worry about starting other than n equals 0. All right, let's put it all together, because we've done some changes to these. Here's the first one. And I believe this is the second. And this is the third. And this is the fourth. So there's our four sums. They all have x to the n. They all start at n equals 0, which means we can combine them and factor off that x to the n. So what's this going to look like? It's going to have that oops. it's going to have that summation there. And then it's going to have an x to the n. And in brackets we'll have everything else. So from the first series, we've got n plus 2, n plus 1, a sub n plus 2. From the second, we've got n times n minus 1 times a sub n. From the third, we've got n times a sub n. And from the last one, just a sub n.
And this is where we stopped in the previous methodology. Uh, maybe we did some cleaning up. So, you know, if you have uh, some A's, sub N's that are all able to be combined, it might be helpful to do that. In this case, you know, these last three terms all have A sub N. It might be nice to combine those. So, you can think about distributing and refactoring and that kind of thing, whatever is going to be easiest. Um, you've got an n squared minus n plus n plus 1. So that minus n and plus n are going to be 0, and you really just have n squared plus 1. So we can rewrite that. n squared plus 1. So just, just distribute the n and combine those three and you'll get that. Okay. So the crux of this whole method is that if the whole power series is equal to 0 for every x, then each of these numbers must itself be zero. So you go from this equation with the series and the x to having one that just sets that equal to zero. Because x isn't going to be necessarily zero. x could be anything, right? So how are you going to make sure that all those numbers add up to zero? Uh, for any value of x, it would all have to be 0. So go back to what power series are all about. Um, if the power series is identically 0, then the coefficients are 0. All right, um, this leads to recursive formulas. So recursive formula just says that one term in the sequence is based off of previous terms, right? So you want to solve for the latter term. In this case, a sub n plus 2. So if I solve for a sub n plus 2, what am I going to have? Um, so I would subtract this to the other side, right? And then I would divide by the n plus 2, n plus 1. You can take the a sub n off the numerator there, kind of put it outside. And that's a recursive formula. So if you gave me a 0, I could give you a 2, right, when n is 0. So you just need to get this thing going, and it'll, it'll start turning these out. Our starting point is actually the initial conditions. The initial conditions are actually the first two terms. Think about the original power series. Right? What happens when x is 0? All the terms in that power series are 0 except for the first one, which is a sub 0. Right? I mean, don't ever forget what this actually is. This says a sub 0 plus a sub 1x oops, x there, plus a sub, oops, a sub 2x squared plus so they all have x in them, except for that first one. So if x is 0, they're all 0, except for a0. So a sub 0 is 2. You can do a similar thing to show that a1 is going to be negative 1. This, so this is a sub 0, and this is a1. So that's actually pretty cool. We, we had the first two coefficients the whole time. So if you have the first two, then you can use the recursive formula to get the other ones. And you could keep going forever, uh, but we'll just keep going as long as we need to. So uh, I think we say uh, y of 0 is a sub 0. And y prime of 0 is a sub 1. This is just reminding you that those first two terms come from the initial condition. So for our problem, uh, what is it, 1 and negative 1? I 
think that's our initial conditions. Oh, two and negative one. All right. Which tells you a sub zero equals two, and a sub one equals negative one. All right, now let's get a few more terms. How many do we want? I don't know. Let's just get four or five altogether, and then you'll have the idea of how it works to get more. So let's start by finding a sub 2. So the, the other ones are going to use this formula, but with a specific value of n. So if I want to find a sub 2, I just need to let n be 0. If n is 0, then it's 0 plus 2, which is 2. So you can rewrite the formula for when n equals 0. So I should write that in 0. All right, so that's going to make the top just 1. Right? And the bottom will be 2 times 1 which is 2, and that's going to be 0. So it'll turn that recursive formula into one that directly relates a2 to a0. But I know a0, so I can find a2. a2 equals negative 1 half times 2, right? Which is negative 1. All right. And then you just increase in incrementally. That's pretty awesome. It's very neat. And when you get a program set up to do this, right, this is just Scream's computer program, um, it could turn out, you know, 100 of these in a second. And then that, that gives you as much accuracy as you'd ever need, right? A hundred of these terms. So we won't get into like how many terms you need for how many decimal places, but uh, these things converge pretty well. All right, so when n is 3, again, let's take the formula here. We're going to, n is 1, we're going to find a3. So if we have n being 1, this is 1 plus 2, which would be 3. So a sub 3? a sub 3, yep. And then up top, you're going to get 1 squared plus 1, uh, which is 2. On the bottom, you're going to get 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3 times 2, which is 6. Um, you can also just go to 1 third here, right? Negative 1 third? Yeah. And yeah, and then we'll trade off n for one. So we still didn't figure out a three. Well, we got to plug in a one. We know a one. A one is. Negative 1. So what is A3? 1 third. And that's what you're going to find is these things getting smaller and smaller. That's what you would want. Uh, because remember, if the terms in the sequence don't go to 0, then the sum won't converge, right? Uh, so yeah, they'll, they'll be fractions, and they'll get smaller. And they might alternate, right? It looks like this one's alternating, positive, negative. Well, not strictly, right? Positive, negative, negative, positive. So it might do weird stuff, but uh, in absolute value sense, they're going to zero. All right. Um, let me go ahead and write out what I have as a series. Because these are just numbers, right? Eventually, we want to actually think of what is the function itself? What is the solution? And it's, it's an equation of two variables. 
So it's actually a naught, right? Two plus a one x, which is minus x plus a two x squared. So that's again minus x squared plus a three x cubed. So you've got these monomials that are increasing, and then these are just the coefficients for them, right? You know, a naught is a constant, and then a1 is the coefficient for the linear term, and a2 is the coefficient for the quadratic term, and so on. So that's the beginning of what this thing is. And we could start looking at graphs of this and see how it actually matches up with the solution. You know, use it to to solve the problem. So you know what y of 0 is, but maybe you want to know what's going on at 1. So plug in 1 for x there, and that'll be a really good approximation. All right, let's talk about doing this with uh, Sage. Check the next video for doing this with Sage.